Right, hello everyone. Welcome to my latest video. It's been a little while since I uh, since I posted anything up. Been a busy week, but um, I thought I'd, 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 this is something I've been working on for a little while, and I've had in mind for ages, to be honest. Um, something that I've been wanting to try out and find a way of implementing. So um, no more rambling. So what I've been looking at is trying to introduce a form aspect to the Poisson distribution model. So we've got our Poisson pack, which I'm um, delighted with and it all works beautifully and it works directly as it should according to the, the Poisson distribution model looking at a whole season's worth of data um, for each each league and working out the Poisson and the calculated calculated probabilities of wins and certain scores so we all know what that is but what I've been doing lately is thinking about um, what it would look like to get some of the form, latest form, um, included into the Poisson model. Because at the moment, we're looking at the, the fixtures all the way back to the start of the season. And everything was so different back at the start of the season, as we all know. A lot of teams had um, almost completely different um, starting 11s. I mean, if you look at Newcastle as an obvious example, um, there's a lot of managerial changes, which have um, induced changes in playing style. So you could argue that the, the results in the first half of the season and the second half of the season sometimes can bear no resemblance to each other, uh, in which case are they that statistically sound? Um, should we be making judgments based on such historical results? Um, so there are arguments that you, for the Poisson distribution model, it, unlike so many other statistical models, um, a lot of data isn't necessarily, or a, a lot of historical data isn't necessarily um, beneficial. Normally you want huge data sets um, to be able to find trends but I feel like it can be a little bit misleading in this model so what I've been looking at is trying to use some form data to complement the system now you could look at it and say I'm going to run a Poisson distribution model based on the last six games of the season and keep updating it every week so you've got the last six games so every week the sixth game drops off and a new game is added so you've got six games worth of data at all times so it's very very current and up to date I don't feel that that's the way forward because if we do that, then we're going to be um, looking at fluctuations in terms of in terms of variance and sort of form. Um, you could have an injury um, to a key player who's out for three or four games that massively affects it. You could have weather conditions that massively affect a, a few weeks for everybody, and you're not taking into account um, the legacy of the results of of previous uh, games at all. And I don't think that's the way forward either. So I've been looking at blending it a little bit. Um, so I'll show you what I've been doing so I've collected I've just done it for the Premier League t for now for this example um, because it's quite a lot of work so we've got the last six games so you'll be familiar with this if you've watched previous videos of how you work out the Poisson distribution so just a quick recap games played games uh, goals scored goals scored against uh, goals conceded yeah same thing the average goal scored uh, and the average goals conceded um, for each team now normally uh, in the Poisson distribution model, we have two sets of data. We have home and away, but this is something else that I've been looking at and thinking. I don't, I don't think it's necessarily accurate to base the predictions purely on home and away form. So it's only home form for the home team and away form for the away team, because as much as I know teams play differently home and away, which is why you look at two different sets of data. Do they, do they play completely differently? Does it mean that the the away results bear no relevance on the next game if the next game is at home? I don't think so personally. Yes, there is a home bias. We all know that, and teams are, are going to be favourite if they're playing at home. But I do believe in consistency and in winning mentality, and that winning breeds winning. And if you've won two away games in a row, I believe that you'll go into that home game with a better chance of winning. But also, if you've won two home games in a row. I believe that you'll go into that next away game with a better chance of winning or a stronger mentality than if you'd lost them both. So just because you're playing away, do you then discount how well you've done in the previous two games at home and you say, well, that's irrelevant because this is an away game. We're only looking at your away stats. Your last away game was six weeks ago. That doesn't matter. We're looking at that and we're not looking at the games in between. And I don't think that's, I don't think that's necessarily sound. Um, so for this purpose I have just used one set of data so this is the overall last six games so it's not the last six home games or the last six away games it's the last six games uh, blended between home and away 
So we've got all of the teams in the Premier League last six games, how many goals they scored, how many goals they conceded, the average goals scored per game and the average goals conceded per game. We then use that to develop the attacking and defensive strength. So to do that, you can see we use how many goals scored divided by the average goals scored and then the same for the defensive strength, how many goals conceded divided by the average goals conceded. And we get these numbers here, which we then punch into our Poisson distribution model. Um, it's I've, I've hidden all the formulas and stuff just because it, it's just a bit untidy in it. So this is the full Poisson. Um, this oh sorry actually no. So this is this is where we punch that last six data in. Skipping ahead a little bit. So this is where we put punch that last six data in. So you can see this is what we've had. I have hidden all the formulas and stuff just to make it a bit crisper. So we can see for tonight we've got Everton way um, way longer odds than than the real odds are suggesting, and Newcastle shorter. We'll go into that a little bit in a minute. Um, so what we've done is we've got created a new Poisson data set, basically, based on six games rather than, what, 30, 24, however, however many games have been played so far. This is the full Poisson. So if we put them into the full Poisson, so this is just the standard stuff that you use in your pack. It's using the whole season's worth of data. And you can see the differences here. Everton, based on the whole season's worth of data, value odds would be 4.52. And the last six, we've got 18.76. So there is a massive change, uh, and I don't think either of those two are necessarily completely um, reliable. So if we skip ahead to Poisson Extra, <laughs> yeah, I'm not very creative with my names, am I? So what I've decided to do is take 25% of the Poisson six-game data uh, and 75% of the full season's data. So it's just supplementing it with a little bit of the form, but still heavily reliant on the longer data set um, and then look at the new odds for that so if you see we've got 18.76 for Everton here a quarter of that is 4.69 70 with for the full season uh, plus on the standard plus on the odds are 4.52 three quarters of that 3.39 so if we then have 3.39 oh, um, if we then look at the two added together we get to 8.08 .08 as our odds and so with our Poisson Extra as you can see and I put a little indicator under here of what, how they've changed by using the extra 25% if you like so the Everton home win has actually gone up by 3.56 to 8.08 .08. so if you just use normal Poisson it'd be 4.52 but it's gone up to 8.08 .08. and you can see that so adding 25% form stats decreases the chance of the Everton win or the draw and increases the Newcastle win chances. And if you look at logic um, away from the stats, if you look at how Newcastle has been playing recently since the takeover and how Everton has been playing recently, that kind of makes sense, doesn't it, I think? Um, again, Wolves versus Leeds. If we add the 25% for the Wolves Leeds, you're looking at an increase in the chance of Wolves winning and it decreases the Leeds win and draw chances. Well, Leeds, I know they won their last game, um, but they've been pretty dire of late. And Wolves are pretty pretty consistent, really, aren't they, I think, without having looked at it too closely. Um, it's not a massive change. I mean, Wolves were, were down to win anyway, but now they're a little bit shorter um, and Leeds are quite a lot longer. Um, and I think, again, the logic can probably back that up. If you, you could, I know you can make an argument for pretty much anything, but I think the logic does back it up. Villa Arsenal. Villa are slightly uh, shorter odds now, and so is the draw. Uh, and the chance of the Arsenal win decreases. Um, it's not it's not massive, but I think it's fair as well. I mean, Arsenal are in great form, so you could argue that this one. I know they lost yesterday, I know, but Arsenal are, are a much changed team. Um, but Villa are, are pretty strong as well. I mean, it's much of a muchness this one really, but that's that's what that one looks like. Um, Leicester Brentford. So this decreases the chance of a Leicester win and increases Brentford, and Brentford have. have Got a couple of results lately, and Leicester are rocky, aren't they? So, I mean, I, I think I can see the logic behind that one as well. So, we're looking at 4.14 for the away win as compared to 4.61. So, we, don't get me wrong, Leicester are still favourites, um, but not a short favourite. So, when you're looking at value, uh, uh, sorry, you're going to have to ignore these um, underlining and bolds. The formatting went a bit wrong. I've only just realised that I should have gone through and changed that. So, don't take that for granted that the underlined and bold ones are a value here. So you're going to have to use the odds as a guidance. Um, the odds are correct, just not the, the formatting. So, yeah, so you can see that Leicester are still favourites, but 
the better odds are 2.26. We're saying really we want to be getting 2.15. So there's still value there. Um, previously, we'd have thought, oh, there's loads of value at, at 1.81 is what we should be getting. But that's the full season odds at the Pros on extra odds, 2.15. It might change your mind as to whether you actually want to place that bet or not because there's not massive value. Uh, Tottenham West Ham. So adding 25% for the stats increases the chance of a Spurs win and decreases the uh, West Ham and draw chances. So yeah, so you're looking at 2.48 for the new odds. Um, Spurs are 1.75 anyway, so it's kind of irrelevant because there's no value there. There still shouldn't be that short. Um, I mean, there's, va- there's value in the West Ham West Ham win um, at 5.20, regardless of which odds you use, but you can see that there's now much less chance. Um, now, I think, personally, I, I think this is an interesting way of blending the two um, of the, the current form and a bit of intuition compared to just going full pros on. I'd be interested to know what you think because it's something I've been playing with quite a lot. I'm not going to change the pros on pack. Uh, this is just a personal sort of experiment that I'm looking at. Um, but I'd be interested to know if you could comment and let me know how you think this would work. Um, if you think it's interesting or if there's any other ways that you can think of sort of supplementing the pros on distribution model. I know there's the uh, the adjustment that you can make for the draws um, which is I've been trying to do and I apologise to um, I can't remember the name at the moment but whoever it was that commented on the video and asked for me to do a video on um, the the Poisson where it's adjusted for X it's adjusted for the draws and I haven't managed to crack it yet so uh, uh, model it in Excel it's really yeah it's kind of difficult for me it is anyway so I have, sorry I'm not ignoring you I will try and get that done because it's something that interests me as well but I think on the scale that I'm using the process distribution pack with the amount of formulas and the stuff going on I, I find it difficult to model and I'm still battling with Python but I haven't had time to mess with it so let me know in the comments please do let me know in the comments uh, and let's get a little discussion going we might be able to help each other out um, so yes that's it for now I hope you enjoy this you can also uh, use this to get your sort of free odds for the, the weekend's Premier League fixtures can't you um, So yeah, cool. Take it easy.